I really like the preference, the start of the video, let you guys know that my intent is to reach and engage with viewers who are interested in food. So my foodies out there, <laughs> viewers interested in making money and uh, viewers interested in social media content creation, monetizing your content, building your brand. And interestingly enough, these all tie together in what I want to share with you. And that being, they are doing something to the food. Influencers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I honestly was kind of shocked when I saw this story pop up where there are businesses and restaurants, restaurants primarily, that uh, have these new policies of no phones, no technology, no flash photography, no video. Mm -hmm. People get their food. You often say, why are you taking a picture of your food? What are you going to do with this? Yeah. Honestly, I don't know. When I do it, I have no clue what I'm going to do. Because you take more pictures of food than I do. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Now I'm taking more shorts videos of the food mm -hmm. but now those shorts end up on this channel or a different channel for monetization but to think that restaurants don't want influencers sharing their food experiences and outings kind of blew my mind like why would you want to intentionally cut off this uh, inbound marketing but I didn't know that a lot of these influencers are almost feel as though they are entitled to free and comped meals oh yeah so there's that I mean I would think of a couple of reasons why you wouldn't, wouldn't want it one because you want people to have to show up to see what it's like and, and whatever else or two because you don't want people thinking it's because they posted it they're entitled to something free yeah, but it goes further than that. It's not just the entitlement okay, and wanting free stuff, which we do it all the time, and we don't want anything for free. Mm -mm. Um, again, I want to talk to the foodies. I want to talk to those influencers interested in becoming influencers, people interested in building brands, building YouTube channels, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it may be. Somebody actually sent me an email. Uh, let's see here. When did they send this email? Oh, they sent it this morning, 1 a.m. And it says, hi, Mr. Kevin. Been watching your videos for one year and your wife videos on YouTube. I came across some YouTube master programs on Facebook that says free master class, which I don't have any problem with or the amount of money or the amount that they charge because they said one can make $10,000 per month making videos without showing your face. Videos like sport videos, but not using your voice. And they will charge either $1,500 or $135 per month. Then later I read the comment on Facebook that someone was saying it's a scam. But I see one person wanting to charge $5,000 to learn how to do YouTube videos to make $30,000 per year, which doesn't make sense, sense to me. I think it's sense to me. Who do you recommend for faceless YouTube video voiceover that's honest and one will make money and pay monthly? Do you teach the class? Thanks. So I do have a Patreon. You guys can go check it out if you want. And that's where I share more information about content creation. And uh, my reply was, I suggest uh, giving it a try yourself first. It's free. <laughs> then see if you need to pay somebody to help training or assistance. Because that's just it. Like my Patreon is 25 cents a day. It's like $7, seven something dollars a month. I don't even know. I'm not trying to make a lot of money doing it. It's just, I need some people to have skin in the game to be, you know, 
serious about this. And if you can't do it for free, then odds are you're probably not really serious about it. But additionally, the Patreon is, again, also, if you just want to support me, support the channel, support the work that I do. But even with that, I'm trying to give back more than I receive. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to go to a restaurant and try to get a free meal. I want to see the restaurant su- succeed. And I can tell you guys right now, we went to PB&J last night, got an amazing bistro burger. Okay, that was probably one of the best burgers which I've ever had. I'll upload that short soon, and it's going to have their information in the description. And they didn't offer comps. We didn't ask for comps. Mm-mm. But at the end of the day, I'll tell you guys, we need them. We need them to survive. Comps? Restaurants, businesses, local restaurants, businesses for our for the sake of our economy. So if if we can help them, you know, that's it's just better overall for everybody, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Now, paying ten thousand dollars or I'm sorry, paying fifteen hundred dollars, paying five thousand dollars to learn how to do YouTube. I would say that there's maybe three or four coaches out there that may be worth that kind of money. But if you ain't got it in you to even try for free, there's no amount of money that you could pay to make ten to $30,000 a month on YouTube because mm-hmm. you ain't got it. You ain't got it. Um, and making ten thousand a month on YouTube with faceless videos is possible. It's gonna take a lot of work. It's gonna take a lot of effort, a lot of energy, a lot of time. And it's it's gonna it's not gonna happen overnight. Like it would probably take you, if I had to guess, three to five years to be able to make ten grand mm-hmm. a month making faceless videos. But here's the problem. They said sports videos. Most of these faceless channels, most of these compilation videos, anything with sports, odds are you're going to run into a copyright strike uh, and you're not going to make any money. And when it comes time to eventually get reviewed, because you don't just automatically get revenue, you have to be reviewed to be accepted into the program. When it comes time for that to happen, they're going to look at your content and they're probably not going to approve you because they're going to say that you've reused too much of someone else's content. So um, I've seen that happen a lot. I've seen people come to me recently and say, hey, my channel was deleted because I have too much reused content. And um, me personally, I would prefer not to do that. I don't do that. And granted, I could turn this camera around and face something else. And voila, we have a faceless video. It's just that simple, just that easy. And we're still accomplishing the same goal by sharing this information for, again, the people I said earlier in the video I want to talk to. The foodies, the influencers, those interested in making content and ultimately monetizing it and making money from it. But here's the problem with the foodies and the influencers trying to monetize their content outside of wanting free meals. Mm -hmm. They ruin the dining experience. Oh yeah. I can imagine that completely. No, you can't. Okay. Explain. Because in these instances, they're going above and beyond. Okay. So you say, you tell us all, how do you feel as though they would ruin the dining experience? Well, I mean, if you happen to be there while an influencer is there, the, instead of being able to focus on the atmosphere of what's going on, you've got somebody with like a camera crew trying to take pictures and, you know, being loud and whatever else. Because sometimes these influencers are obnoxious. I'm thinking like, I don't know who, but I'm thinking of some. <laughs> and they're obnoxious. They're loud. They're over the top. Sometimes they want to make a big spectacle out of something when it's absolutely nothing just to get the views, the clicks, the whatever. And that can ruin the experience for everyday people that are there trying to enjoy. That's interesting because when I think about going about it that way, I think about it from a very subtle perspective. Mm-hmm. It literally takes me less than 30 seconds to swipe my camera mm-hmm. around the table and I'm done. Exactly. However, you're close. I didn't know you were going to go that route. 
route. What would you, you think I was going to You're do? close. Okay. And they're saying that these jokers are showing up with lighting. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. All this production. For a hamburger. Therefore, it ruins the experience for the others, and they don't want them anymore. Or they're giving them preferential treatment, uh-huh. stating, look, if you guys want to do this, that's fine. You can show up before we open. You can book a reservation before we open. It's crazy that these businesses would shy away from having more inbound marketing and traffic coming to them by making this policy. But I do think that inadvertently they are also drawing attention to themselves by going to these media outlets and telling them that they're not allowing this to happen only to get free publicity and marketing from the media outlets Mm -hmm. posting the story. Look, no harm, no foul. I like it. I like people getting creative and accomplishing the goal. And the goal in this instance is improving the experience for everybody and uh, getting the word out and getting their name, getting their business or restaurant recognized and promoted. You know, you got to be, um, you have to be innovative today to really make it. And some of these folks are quite possibly going to have a much harder time in the very near future as YouTube has updated their policy. Let me pull this up so I can read it correctly the youtube director and head of youtube health dr garth graham has has an updated policy and an approach to real content related to eating particularly eating disorders therefore some of these influencers who are building their brand off of devouring food Mm -hmm. And what could potentially be deemed by YouTube and the algorithm and the system and AI as irresponsible and a risk to young people's health may see their content suppressed, age restricted. It's still so crazy to me. It's considered a mental health issue. Uh, eating disorders uh, and the stigma behind it. And it's, you know, YouTube has put great effort into new policies to remove content that glorifies or promotes eating disorders. Well, so that's the thing, glorify being the word. So there are channels out there that even I have come across where it's people who look like they are a skeleton with skin on and they are talking about how they do this and this and this to not eat, to not gain weight, to whatever. I can understand YouTube going, nope, age restricting the crap out of that, making that so it can't be shown because that is detrimental to a person's mental health and well-being if they're already in that mind frame of worried about eating. Now, other ones that are, hey, listen, I understand this is the issue. This is how you can get through it each day to each day do better and better and better as opposed to keep your body worse and worse and worse and your mental health wor- worse and worse, that's different. And I wonder if those kinds are also going to be restricted. It's a tough one. It's kind of like when YouTube went about their hunting and uh, animal abuse changes. Um, for lack of better words, no pun intended, when you cast this net, fishing channels, although purely about Boating and fishing were getting dinged. They were getting flagged. They were getting demonetized. They were getting canceled. They were getting shut down, wiped out, deleted because they were fishing. Mm -hmm. And some fishing channels were glorifying the abuse of fish. (laughs) The abuse of fish, yes. So there were certain scenes you had to cut out, you know. But then it just kind of got into the whole thing. It was like, you know what? If you're fishing, you're just not going to get reach. You're not going to get views. You're not going to get impressions. You're not going to go viral. You're not going to be able to grow your channel. So there's that. That's a thing. 
Um, I actually came across, I need to pull it up. I think it was Think Media. And uh, I'm still on my quest. I'm still on my um, journey of, I guess, cleaning up my channel Mm -hmm. and my subscribers. Sort of. Because let me read this post to you that they put up on their community post. And look, guys, if I'm catching your attention with what I'm talking about and you're not subscribed to Think Media or other channels that share content and information to help YouTubers and creators just be better in general, Mm -hmm. you're missing out. Two days ago, Think Media posted a community post says, the YouTube algorithm has changed. Here's everything you need to know. Now, I feel as though they are 100% right, 100% accurate, but I have yet to find any actual proof of this change. I don't know if anyone ever actually reports the change, like YouTube changed the algorithm. Mm-hmm. But we know it, we know they changed it because we've been doing this long enough. It's like uh, if you go to a restaurant, for instance, my foodies out there know, you go to a restaurant, one thing is different in a recipe or maybe even the chef that prepared it, you know. Mm-hmm. You've had this meal, this entree, this appetizer, whatever it may be, so many times you know. We've been doing this long enough, and it's kind of like, all right, something changed. You may not be able to spot it, but you but know you can, something changed. You can feel it. So what they post here says that the old rules of YouTube don't work anymore. If you want YouTube to work for you instead of you working for YouTube, check out these four important updates. Number one, update number one. The YouTube subscriber count has quickly become an outdated relic. It's a vanity metric. The old rules of YouTube required you to have a high subscribers count. And that just isn't the case anymore. And uh, so it's kind of like, let's just say, let's just talk about the economy for a second. Inflation Mm -hmm. sucks. Inflation sucks. Yes. Inflation is high. Okay. But regardless of your financial situation, if the report came out tomorrow or Monday and they said inflation's under control, 2%, how does that change anything? Nothing. It doesn't change the amount of money in your pocket. It doesn't change the amount of money in your wallet. It doesn't change the amount of money in your bank account. It doesn't change anything. Correct. So if all of a sudden I had a million subscribers and I'm still getting the same views, The subscriber count doesn't matter. The only time, really, that the subscriber count really matters is when trying to become monetized because you obviously have to have at least 1,000 subscribers. It's the only time it really, really, really matters. Outside of that, what matters most is how many subscribers you have that actually want to see the content that you create, which is a problem because if you accidentally go viral on the wrong content, it will taint your subscribers, Uh which is why I am currently trying to clean up my subscribers. I don't care how many I end up with, but I do want to make sure that the subscribers that I do have are interested in the content that I make. I want to have these conversations with you. I don't want to only focus on having this huge subscriber count where I can show you through vidIQ's analytic tools other channels that have way more subscribers than me that get less views, that make less money. So what does a subscriber count mean? All it means is that uh, you have a plaque now. Nothing wrong with the plaque. You got your plaque. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. I hope you get more plaques. Thanks. But The key is that if you want this to make money, like really make money, the key is going to be earning the plaque based on people who want to see 
the content you create, who mm-hmm. want to have these conversations with you, who ultimately want to be your friend. I watched another creator. Her name is, nobody's going to know who I'm talking about mm-hmm. because her channel's not very big, but she has some good information. Everybody, in my opinion, I think you need to take with a grain of salt, but I can learn from anything and everyone. And her name is Annie Dubay. She's got, i tell you what, let me pull this joker up. Annie Dubay has, uh, YouTube decided that, her channel don't exist no more. Let's see here. Annie Dubay has 132,000 subscribers. Okay. Okay. Out of curiosity, how many subscribers do you have? 130,000. Ooh, 130,000. And if you had to state on average, how many views per video do you get? Right now, average, I would say 40,000. 40,000. She's got 132,000 subscribers, and four days ago, she posted a video. You know how many views it got? Should I go high or low here? Guess. A million. Ooh, good guess. That's cool, because it works both ways. Uh You can have a tremendous amount of views on videos Uh and not get the subscribers, and you can have a ton of subscribers and not get the views. Well, because I have one video that's got almost 800,000 views. And you would think, why do I not have 800,000 subscribers? <sighs> it, it gained me like 3,000 subs, but that just means that it showed it to more people who had zero interest in that video than did have interest. Yeah, and that's part of the change to the algorithm. Yeah. But four days ago, she got 2,400 views. The video before that, seven days. How many views? So the last one you said 2,400 views? Mm -hmm. Did it one before that? uh, 80,000. 753 views. Oh, I thought you were going to say 1,000. What is happening? 10 days before that, how many views? I don't want to play this game anymore. 1,800. Two two weeks, 2,900. On average, I'd say she's about one to 3,000 views a video. It's just my guess. But what were her views three months ago before the algorithm decided to Ooh. crap the bed. Let's go back. Let's, like it's let's, go, let's take it back. Let's go way back. Let's go way back. Honestly, uh, no different. Okay. No different. Okay. And, you know, just my quick channel audit, most popular video, 434,000, which is really good. That was two years ago. 357,000, three years ago. And you can see over the years how the algorithm has changed. Um, And it is becoming increasingly more difficult to get views based on the old models of building channels. Mm. I agree with that one. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that it's a vanity metric. It means nothing today because the algorithm has updated. According to Think Media... Think Media update number two, creators are experiencing exponential and rapid growth through shorts. Now, that's because that's what they're pushing instead of the regular length videos right now. All right. But the downside is if you generally post full length videos and you post one short and it does very well on YouTube and they subscribe for that, and then you don't post any more shorts, you got a lot of pissed off subscribers who have no interest in your actual content that you normally make. So then you have this high subscriber count and low views. <laughs> so, and here's the deal. And, you know, um, this is us having a normal conversation. And we both look at pretty much everything completely differently. But I look at it more analytically. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say this. I look at everything emotionally. If you make a short based on the principle of people wanting to see what you create and wanting to have these conversations and wanting to be your friend, they're not going to be upset about your long form content. True. Because they're going to align. They're going to be uh, a part of a whole. It's going to be an introduction. It's going to be a teaser clip, a trailer, a preview to a movie that they want to watch. You don't get upset about movie trailers. No. You get excited about them. Generally speaking. To see the full movie. Correct. And if you can understand that, then you can potentially understand how shorts could be used 
as Think Media says, to grow in terms of subscribers, but not necessarily income. Because if you know anything about shorts, they don't pay much at all. They don't pay much at all. So it can be a useful tool. YouTube's obviously pushing it for a certain reason. And if you can understand what that is, you can use this to your benefit to grow. And like I said earlier, you're going to have to become much more innovative. Okay. You're going to have to get, get more creative. However, I think this is going to work out really well if you know how to do it um, in connecting with the people, not the number. Because, I mean, honestly, um, I would much rather have a smaller, tight knit group of subscribers who are going to watch every video all the way to the end and support through clicking links and mm -hmm. making conversions and everything else that goes into monetizing content than having a huge number of subscribers and every video I puts up gets no views. I agree. Same. So update number three is that many creators are saying that subscribers are a vanity metric, which means more subscribers does not equal more success. Previously subscribers was pretty much all that mattered. And honestly, you could probably pretty much guarantee that you were going to get a certain amount of views based on how many subscribers you had, even if the video was a complete dud, mm -hmm. even if it was a complete bomb. Okay. And the number four update, the fourth update here is that you still need subscribers to get monetized on a platform. As I said earlier, that's pretty much the only time subscribers really, really matter. You need a thousand. They also kind of matter when it comes to advertisers looking at your content, but I can also show you small channels who have focused and hit their mark on their target audience and niche, um, getting sponsorship opportunities and making really good money. Uh, not every, not every category, every market, every niche is going to have a huge million, multi-million viewer audience. Mm -hmm. This is not, um, Additionally here, they have a call to action to buy their program, which, you know, I would consider Think Media as one of the company's channels, creators that I would really listen to what they have to say. I'm not going to buy the course, but, you know, it could potentially be well worth it. And with that being said, Think Media has got 2.46 million subscribers. But, you know, just looking at their videos, I would say they probably average about, mm, I'm going to give them a generous 30K view per video. Okay. At 2.46 million subscribers. But their videos are super specific. So each video is targeting a specific subgroup of their subscribers and not all of their subscribers. Okay. Uh, you know, so me watching their content. The number one mistake you're making in your YouTube videos, um, I might watch it. Six minutes and 51 seconds, I might watch it. Budget gear, uh, budget your YouTube studio setup, mics, lights, and accessories. I'm not going to watch that. Um, beat fear. If you're scared of making content, this is for you. I'm not going to watch that. Um, A7 IV, the Sony A7 IV quick setup for A7 IV quick camera setup and best settings for video. I'm not going to watch that because I don't have an A7 IV. But of their subscribers, I think the beauty of it is, is that they are not necessarily trying to appeal to every single one of their 2.46 million subscribers on every single video. Makes sense. Does make a lot of sense. However, one of them is two weeks ago, why going viral can hurt your channel. And it's five minutes, 28 seconds. It got 7,800 views. I watched that video. I don't understand why more of their audience didn't watch that video. Crazy. I Maybe because most people can't understand how going viral could hurt you. They just, that's, that's why you would watch it. I know, but th most people think going viral is a great thing. And sometimes it's just, it's what shoots you in the foot and you don't even realize it. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is that small percentage of people who will try 
for free mm-hmm. before paying for a course. They got 7,800 views in two weeks out of 2.46 million subscribers. That shows you the percentage of viewer, uh, percentage of creators out there who really are trying to master their craft and not just make money on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Which I have more videos to bring to you guys specifically going through what uh, vidIQ shared recently a uh, one day ago is your is YouTube monetization fair for small channels and there's way more that I want to discuss with you about that video and what he discusses and a few things that he doesn't discuss as we move forward in again me trying to connect with you guys the foodies the influencers the creators the people trying to make money YouTube content, whatever it may be, social media, it all applies the same. So as I'm trying to clean up my subscriber count, I'm also realizing as I'm having this conversation with you guys and myself is that, yes, I do need some of these folks to go away Mm -hmm. because some of these folks bring negative energy. They're not interested in any of this Mm -hmm. at all. They only want to complain. They only want to, you know, victim mentality, woe is me. And that only hurts my ability to get my audience interested in my content to actually go viral, to reach more people interested in the same. However, I just really just had this epiphany that, yeah, your content shouldn't be always to satisfy every single subscriber. It's never going to be because every single subscriber has subscribed for a different reason. Somebody may subscribe just I've had people say that they subscribe to me because I, I'm relaxing for them. And I'm like, how? I'm like a squirrel on crack. I'm all over the place and whatever else. But a lot of them say the way I talk when I'm making my main channel videos is relaxing to them. I'm bringing them news that's important, but in a way that's not scary. So people subscribe for that. Others subscribe because they like my humor. Others subscribe just because it's the news stuff and they could give two craps about who's actually bringing it to them. It's just things they want to know. And then others who subscribe because they like you and I happen to be your wife. It just depends on the person. So, yeah, I mean, this is um, this is eye opening and how the algorithm has changed and is changing and how one, you want to connect. OK, mm-hmm. two, you need to be yourself, uh, which we're going to talk about in the next video and acting and scripts and all this other stuff. Um, but three, just from my own personal experience, it's like. I really like Auto Trader. Mm -hmm. I really like Haggerty. I really like Auto Trader, but I really like Rory. So that's why I watch Auto Mm -hmm. Trader. I really like Haggerty, but I really like Jason Camisa and Randy Popes. So that's why I watch Haggerty. Which one's the one I like? Jason Camisa. Oh, and Randy Popes. They're the ones who do the driving. Randy Popes is the older guy with the white hair. Jason Camisa is the funny. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I'm not subscribed to either one of them. Because you know their names and you'll look them up. I'm not subscribed to either one of them. And I don't want to watch every single video they make. I only want to watch the Auto Trader videos with Rory with the cars that I care about. Yeah. I only want to watch Haggerty with Jason Camisa with the cars that I care about. So you have to look at your audience the same way you are. You're not going to want to watch everything. Not everybody's going to want to subscribe to you. But you also have to understand that from a creative standpoint and know that not everybody's going to want to watch your video. Which is why they say, make what you want to make, not what they want to see. Right. Which is what I do. I make what I want to make. And if you want to watch it, cool. And if you don't. The caveat there is making it so they want to see it with the title and thumbnail. You have to find that happy medium. I've had two conflicting reports today that says, one, that YouTube does not review the content. And the context and all that matters is the title and thumbnail. And the other one is that the context and content is what matters. But then they kind of wrapped it up in an enigma where the essence of that content and context needs to be presented and displayed in the title and thumbnail to get people to click. As you are competing on the homepage against other recommended videos for other people's similar tastes and interests. And it has nothing to do with likes and watch time and comments either. It's almost as if the algorithm has taken this new emotional approach and almost similar (laughs) to TikTok's uh, algorithm where it can almost figure out what your 
tastes are without you actually even telling it, Mm -hmm. which is really weird. I don't even know how to explain this. I don't even know how people program this, but either way, this is where we're at today. It's going to become probably 50-50, increasingly more difficult for people to succeed on the platform and increasingly easier for people to succeed on the platform. More difficult if you're going about it in the old traditional methods that these older programs and courses have taught, not taking into account the changes of the algorithm, but possibly easier for those who are realizing, hey, I need to connect with people. Mm -hmm. If I want to go make friends, I don't go out into the world with a script Mm -mm. and, you know, uh, bullet points. You go and you make friends and you see what happens. Like friends aren't made like I just made a friend. It's, oh, snap, we're friends. Like I still think there's bullet points, though, mental bullet points. There are still things that you want to be able to talk about with somebody who's a potential friend and you'd like them to be interested in if they're a potential friend. So I do feel like there's still bullet points. It's just not. But you got to be you. You can't have the bullet points and then not be you because you're following this model that someone has written up and says, this is how you have to do it. Uh You have to say this. You have to have a hook. Then you got to have eight second intro. Then you got to restate the beginning and then you got to do this. Then you have to cliffhang to the end. Yes. What if that's how you went about life, though? But there are people like that, though. There are people who are socially awkward, who do have that kind of checklist when they go out. So even then, they're still being themselves, but it's a... It's a... Calculated. It's a calculated self. Yeah, it's calculated. It's not It's not 100% real, real, yeah. maybe. But interestingly enough, I'll leave you guys with this one. The shorts content, that actually... According to someone who did a lot of research and they tried to crack the shorts algorithm code, I thought short shorts were short shorts. Who wears short shorts? The winner. But longer shorts are what get shorts creators more views. Because the algorithm will push those more because they can put an ad on it. They can put an ad on anything. But when they do those display over display ones or whatever else you get a longer view time of those on a longer short. But you also need to realize that YouTube's primary goal is to increase the eyes on the platform and and the length of time that they are on the platform. Yes. And so the longer the video, the better. Whether it's a short or a... Yeah. Ironically, the longer the short video, the better. Yes. Yeah. That's weird. It's so weird. (laughs) But sometimes a short just needs to be a short. If it's five seconds it needs to be five seconds don't make it any longer because then you'll piss people off like why is this why this this could have been five seconds yeah there's that um similar to my content they're like well kevin can't you just get to the point faster can't you just spit it out again folks look i'm trying to connect with the people who are interested in having these conversations with me who are interested in growing learning working together to achieve goals and success make money And uh, very few wealthy individuals that I know have gotten to the point of which they've gotten because they have been impatient and unable to have conversations and learn uh, and and build their wealth over time. And if you don't have that patience, then by all means, go to the gas station, buy some scratch off tickets, cross your fingers, hope for the best. Until next time. (laughs) See you guys. Bye. Cross your fingers and hope for the best.